My name is Rick Shostak, and I'm the chair of the economics department. I have a, a couple of other panelists that will be joining me, and I will introduce them in a minute. So it seems like our participant list is stabilized here. Why don't I give each of our other panelists a chance to introduce themselves? I'll start with my associate chair undergraduate, Valentina Galvani. Hi, I'm Valentina Galvani, the associate chair for undergraduate. So I'm the person who checks equivalences of course transfers, give advice for um, academic choice of elective courses, and um, do you want me to start the slides now, no. Rick? No, we'll, we'll introduce everyone else first. Yeah. So Valentina will have a couple of slides that give an overview of our program and we'll get to those in just a minute. I'd next introduce Ray Beaumont, who's our undergraduate advisor, and she can introduce herself. So good morning. My name is Ray Beaumont. I'm the undergraduate advisor for the Department of Economics at the moment. So when you send questions by email or you try to get in touch with us, I'm the one who will be giving you a hand with registration questions, application questions, awards, certificates, a lot of different things. Thank you. And we're also joined today by two of our wonderful honors students who can answer any questions you may have about what it's like being a student in the department. So Austin Ferenc, why don't you say hi? Hello, I'm Austin Ferenc and uh, I'm a fourth year honors econ student and I also um, am a tutor for econ 1 and 102 or econ 101 and 102. And so um, you might see me if you have any questions. Yeah, so we, we employ a bunch of our uh, senior honor students to um, answer questions for our mass lectures of 101 and 102. Okay, and then our other honor student today is Bessie Doan. Why don't you say hi? Hi, I'm Bessie Doan. I'm also a fourth year econ honor student, and I'm also one of the tutors, as you mentioned. And I also run the Effective Altruism Club here on campus. Okay. So thank you all for joining us. Um, we can go, so Valentina, as I said, has a few slides to just give an overview of what our program looks like. Yes, uh, thanks. I don't see the slides uh, yet. Should appear. Oh, here it is. Thank you so much, Ray. Um, so very quickly, so uh, can you go to the next slide? Um, thanks. So economics as a discipline is more or less as three branches. Microeconomics, that is the study of economics from bottom up. Macroeconomics, the study of economics from top to bottom. And then tools, that is calculus, uh, statistics, and econometrics. So the BA is therefore um, has three stream of courses. The first, they are, I, don't, I will not read them all. They are on the slide, you can always check them out. We will post to these things. But anyway, um, the idea is that uh, you have uh, a sequence of courses in the stream of micro, one sequence of, of sequence of courses for the stream of macro, and one stream for calculus. Uh, in general, try to complete the calculus statistic econometric stream as soon as possible, because as the two, these are tools for the other courses. Can you go to the next slide, please? Thanks. So uh, I suggest always... If I could just interrupt. On that first slide, uh, we hadn't fixed that second line. So we have the micro sequence twice and the macro sequence oh, is merged. Yeah, sorry. We'll have to fix it. I, my mistake, for sure. So there are, in the, in the suggested course plan, you can look at it later, but essentially what I recommend after six years of, uh, as in my role of associate chair, is that to try to get to the 101, 102 economics, and then all the math courses done in the first year. Because these, they, um, these courses unlock 299, which is our in-house um, statistic course, which in turn unlock um, regression analysis. They are also, the basic idea, try to get the econometric and calculus course done as soon as possible. That will unlock other courses for the future and allows you to uh, graduate earlier. You don't have to wait. Uh, also, we have a new course, Econ, Econ 109, 
uh, that you can waive if you pass a um, writing assessment. You can check on the website uh, what the writing assessment, assessment is about. Um, can we go to the next slide? So Econ 109 is a course on writing in economics, not creative writing, just basic writing in a technical writing, technical writing in economics. You should probably think about taking 109 before taking junior English, because practically in junior English, they teach appreciation of literature. In 109, they give you a good review, if you need it, of how to write. Uh, don't uh, postpone it too much. And this is extremely helpful, especially for international students who maybe, uh, I used to be an international student, so I used to struggle with writing in, tech, in economics. Can we go to the next slide? Thanks. For the honor, honor have, uh, have heavier requirements, as you know, Austin and Boisden can say, uh, for um, graduation, not only the GPA, but we have more courses, uh, more advanced courses in micro, in the streams, micro, macro, and, uh, and, um, calc and, and econometrics. Uh, so in total, you will have uh, for the honor, um, honor stream, uh, which is uh, for the honor street on graduate studies, the route is you take five courses in calculus and mathematics applied to economics. Um, you take also an additional econometric course at a 400 level. Um, instead, uh, the Honor Graduate Student Route is the one that I will recommend if you want to go to a master in economics because it covers um, at the 400 level the micro and macro and econometrics cover the topic that admission committee of must for master in economic look at. So that is when you apply for a master in economics, they will look, they will check whether you have taken these courses, the honors 400 level courses. For other type of, if you don't want to go, you, you're not sure you want to go to a master in economics, then you should go to the honor, you could, could consider the honor essay route, where actually you skip one econometrics at a 400 level, um, statistic to economics, and you don't do, um, or we do one course less in mathematics, but you um, do a mini thesis. And it's very good when you want to prepare, for example, for law school. Um, that said, can we go to the next slide? There are perks uh, and challenges of the Honor program. The perks, uh, you get a nice scholarship, uh, most students, uh, but, but probably the, the student will talk about it more. I just want to, mentioned that it's also a challenging program because you maintain, you have to maintain the GPA with increasingly technical courses. So you have to be prepared to work a lot if you want to be honored. And I think that's it for my side. All right, so we have a few questions in the Q&A. Um, Someone want to talk about the application process for moving into the honors program? So you have to fill an application is online. I mean, and um, and essentially is a different from the BA in some sense. It's different from the bachelor. It's a separate application. Um, you can transfer, of course, within the from BA to. Um, Honors. You just uh, look online and maybe later we can post to the link. Okay, and is it the same process for the joint honors in econ and math? I think it's the same process, but I, I haven't done it personally. So maybe Ray can, can say that to that. If you can. I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll uh, post to the website. Uh, there is a question, can Econ 109 be used to fulfill the arts English requirements? And the answer is no. No. As, as Valentina said, it's a course you should take before taking your English requirement. Um, we do, by the way, we have tend to, we don't have an official policy, but we do tend to recommend that you try to take one of the writing studies courses. Uh, they tend to focus a lot more on on writing than on literature appreciation than the English 101, but but that's entirely up to you. Um, 
I think I'll do a, a couple of things. One of the things no one's asked yet, but you might wonder what are the advantages of doing an econ degree? I can say there's been some studies recently in the United States which suggest that uh, people who graduate with a major in economics, by the time they're 40, they're making about $20,000 a year more on average than other arts graduates or indeed that other than other gra university graduates in general. So it has turned, it is still a very uh, <clears throat> good degree for launching a career. <clears throat> We don't, um, unfortunately, this university doesn't collect really good data at the department level, so we only have anecdotal evidence on where our students go. Governments tend to hire lots of economists. They haven't been hiring as many lately, but they're still a place where lots of our students go, both the federal and provincial governments. Banks are another place where a lot of economists get jobs, but uh, basically economists get hired in throughout the industrial sector and, and so on. Um, a lot of them get hired to do things like forecasting and data analysis and stuff like that. Um, but basically, economic theory gives you a, a really good idea both of how individual markets work and how the aggregate economy, unemployment and inflation and things like that work. And so that's useful in a, it, that sort of knowledge is very useful in a wide range of employments. It's also useful, I have to stay in your life as a citizen, once you've taken Econ 101, you can hardly listen to a newscast without thinking those people don't know Econ 101. They're saying stupid things because they don't know the basics of economic theory. It really is, economics is behind most of, or is involved in most of the public policy issues uh, that face our, our societies and uh, economists have some keen insights. And so you'll find that uh, you can come up with much uh, more informed opinions on a lot of the issues of the day if you've taken some economics courses. Okay, yeah, yeah. while I was chatting, we got a whole bunch more questions. So I just have to figure out how to scroll. While I'm scrolling down, I was- Can I answer a couple? Can I answer a couple? Yeah, of the questions? Go for it. So the first question is that 161 and uh, whether STAT 161 is equivalent to 150, STAT 151, yes it is, but we strongly recommend you to take STAT 161, that is statistics applied to economics, because it prepares you much better for the following courses. So you should try to take 161 if you can. Forget where your friends go, even if you take just a minor in economics, just take that. We have, a, we have worked a lot with the staff department to come up with a course that is useful for students who will take economic courses. So take that 161. So uh, for Econ 109, um, um, or uh, sorry, another question pop up. Uh, you have to take uh, also Math 154 and Math 156, both of them. There are two calculus requirements for the BA in economics. And other uh, small things that uh, pop up again on um, uh, 109, a quick question was, uh, is uh, um, 109 for the assessment? Uh, maybe uh, Ray can post the website for the assessment. That is, uh, 109 is needed unless you pass a writing assessment, which is done online in these days and marked by instructors at the, at the economics department to check whether you have the ability to write enough, or you have a sufficiently good ability to write to succeed in following courses. Thanks. Okay, there's a few questions about courses being full, and I guess we have to recognize that the university is in a bit of a budgetary crunch these days, and so, for us to add new courses, I have to get permission from the Dean and the Dean has no money. One exception there is Econ 109. We can probably add a section of Econ 109 since it is a course that many students have to take before they can take most of our other courses. Um, so Ray and Valentina and I keep an eye on the watch lists and when watch lists get too big, we, we ask the Dean if we can add more courses um, that's a difficult process, again, with the exception of Econ 109. And there's a couple of questions in here about whether you should take Econ 109 
early and our recommendation would be take it as soon as possible because it's going to give you a set of skills that you'll use in all your other courses. Whether it's required for those courses or not, anything you can do to improve your reading and writing skills is going to help you in the entire degree program. Uh, we do, there's a question about spring and summer. We did offer 109 just in this past summer term. We will probably offer it next spring and summer. We haven't quite decided that yet. Um, we are certainly going to offer multiple sections of, one, of 109 in both fall and winter. Uh, we do traditionally offer sections of 101, 102, 281, 282, and 299 in spring or summer. But again, uh, we do that, but we, we do it with some hesitation because since those courses are so essential to the program, we really prefer if you take them in fall and winter and get to devote the entire 13 weeks to what's some fairly complicated course material. I should, we'll, we'll answer some more questions, but I did want to give, since Austin and Bezendon have been kind enough to join us, I thought I'd give them a choice of two questions. One is, what have you especially liked about being an econ student? And the other is, are there things you wish you'd known back in first year that you now know? So and answer either one of those or both. Um, if I'll go first, if that's okay with you, Bezendon. Um, Honestly, um, kind of what Rick was saying before about economics being a very applicable and just like looking at the news and then you're analyzing it and you're just thinking about how are people really, um, really thinking correctly about a certain topic. Economics, honestly, my favorite part about it is that it's just revolutionized the way I think. And it, I think totally different from when it came in. And I just, it, it's, I'm just trained to, uh, to think critically about various issues. And um, what I wish I knew when I first started is honestly the importance of math. Um, just having the math and statistics as a, a, a strong background uh, because it's very useful. It's a very useful tool um, into understanding, uh, I guess, our economic issues. Okay, best and done. So I'm gonna agree with the math thing. I wish I had known about that a lot earlier because I went through the first two years of my degree without taking any math except for a calculus one. And also try as early as possible to do some experiential learning. So that could be an internship, there's arts work experience, that could be research, you can talk to your professors, or you could just try to write essays about what you're learning in class, how it's applicable to something in your life or something in the world. There is also um, community service learning. You can do internships through that. And there are just for your non-econ electives, you can take community service learning classes. So those would have um, those would have components where you work with nonprofits here in Edmonton. Thank you. So I, I would add one thing to that. We created a new course just this year, a 400 level projects course where we got a handful of uh, non-government agencies and uh, government departments to, to suggest projects for teams of students to work on. And we had about 20 students do seven different projects, I think. And that worked really well. And we're certainly going to do that again next year. We had some interest from the business community. And so we'll hopefully get some uh, projects from them as well. So that's another sort of quasi-experiential learning that we can, we can offer. Uh, there was a question in here about the math requirements. So there isn't a ton of math in the early ones. So 101 and 102, it's mostly drawing pretty diagrams and things like that. We offer our 281 course is also, also doesn't use calculus. So there is some algebra in there, but it's not too mathematically demanding. After that, the senior courses do tend to have the calculus requirements. And so once you get into the upper year courses, you, you do need to have some math, but it's certainly possible to do a minor in economics without needing lots of math. There is, again, some basic intuition behind the basic microeconomic and macroeconomic theory that we can teach without math. And there's a related question, which I really like, which was, is econ hard? 
And I think I'll throw that back to our students. Is econ hard, Austin and Bessendon? Um, if you enjoy it, it's not hard at all, I'd say. <laughs> Um, Econ 101 and 102, um, you, either you like it or you don't like it. Um, if you're a very logical person, you will very much enjoy um, economics courses, I'd say, and then they're not that hard. So Econ 101 and 102, I guess, are a good way to test if you like it. Cool. Yeah, I agree with that. And for the upper level courses, it's just about getting into a frame where you're not thinking about the difficulty, but you're trying to understand what it really means. And nothing is, you can always learn. You get better at, at these things as you go. Just engage with your professors, look for other material. You can look at your textbooks, talk to your classmates, and it gets easier. Okay, thank you. Um, Okay, a couple, let me quickly answer some of these other questions. Is it necessary to pursue the honors if you want to do graduate studies? No, but you really should take most of those courses that are required for the, the so graduate programs in economics will look for those 400 level courses in microeconomics, macroeconomics, and econometrics. So if you take those anyway, you can probably get into graduate school. If you don't take those, they will probably require that you take them before you can officially get into a graduate school. Um, um, the requirements for being a tutor in 101 and 102, uh, we have a coordinator of the tutor lab who basically looks at the honor students and does an interview. Uh, we end up hiring most of them as tutors. And we have been um, thinking that we might expand that service over time, money allowing, um, and, and seeing whether we can get the tutors more actively involved in the teaching of those courses. Uh, also, can I say something about, uh, there was a question on clubs and I want to add on what was already said. There is also the Economic English Conversation Club Mm -hmm. That's a very good uh, way to get to know people, to practice your conversational English, and just, just break the barrier, the language barrier and the cultural barrier. So um, we can post, uh, we will post the, hopefully the, the, the link, but you can just search economic English conversation. Um, and uh, it's a student who have taken, I mean, essentially you go there and you chat with, there is a facilitator who makes you chat about different topics. And if you take 10 sessions of that, you actually get even a letter of recognition that you did a lot of practice on conversation, which is always good on a CV. You can go up to level four of the letter of recognition, that, which is pretty advanced. And it's free, it's completely free. You just enroll and you can, we do it online, of course, this year. And students who have been participating to the EECC, they really love that. They made friends, they got to understand the perspective of other people. Think of us at the debate type of uh, course, but um, more friendly. Just everybody tried to chat. We, we've also, from time to time, there has been an Economic Students Association. I think it's kind of dormant right now. The department would certainly be willing to see it more active, and that would kind of host some social events, and we would usually, every year, have a gathering where students interested in going on to gra graduate school would come, and we would talk to them about the process of going on to graduate school and so on. Um, so that's certainly something. If there's interested students, we can we could get that going again. So uh, can I uh, also answer a couple of questions about uh, isn't uh, the fact that there is a textbook textbook course? A student asked, uh, why don't I uh, see a textbook requirement for 101? Um, uh, you can email your the instructor of your section and they will actually tell you, but the course outline should be out soon with the textbook requirement. 
And also, it doesn't really matter, I would say, if you take first 101 or 102, but that maybe I'll leave it to students. What do you think? Is it better to take 101 first or 102 first? Passing down. Um, from, from what I've seen, a lot of the professors teach Econ 102 as if you've already learned 101. Um, they, um, it, they use some supply and demand uh, topics that you learn in 101 to, and build upon them in 102. So better to take 101 first, 102 second? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions? Can I um, answer a question about the math? Because um, there, there's a few questions in here about how I guess how good do I have to be at math to be successful in economics? And um, I wouldn't say you necessarily have to be good. Um, when I first started, I, uh, I was okay at math, I'd say. But as I've gone through, I, I've just learned and learned and you're, you're built up to, to do well in math. So I wouldn't be afraid of how hard math is if you're willing to put in the work to, um, I, to learn it in short. So I hope that answers some of the questions about that. Yes, I know. And also the courses Math 154 and Math 156 are calibrated for economists. And, uh, and especially Math 156 has been created to provide, um, so the topic they are taught in uh, Math 156 used to be taught in Econ 299, a 200 level course. Now we create a new course to give you more time to learn the same topic, meaning that by the time you're done with 154 and 156, you have covered the basis and you are and you should have enough time to practice and get really comfortable with the material. You shouldn't be rushed in. So that's good. So there's a, uh, a, a interesting question here about how we are going to be teaching economics remotely. There's no easy answer there because different instructors are going to do things differently. The most common approach is going to be to tape lectures and then students can observe those and then most instructors are organizing some sorts of uh, times where they can meet with groups of students to, to, to discuss the lecture material. Um, so we're hoping so the and the, the taped videos have the advantage that you can kind of play them over and over if you're having trouble with particular little pieces that are important, but there should still in all the courses be chances for interaction and asking professors questions and so on. We're also in the department um, training a bunch of our graduate students to help out with answering questions and leading discussions and things like that. So uh, I don't know, did you have anything else that you would like to say, Valentina, about how we're teaching remotely this year? I'm really confident it's going to work pretty well. Uh, instructors uh, have been working pretty hard. Um, remember that we have instructors, and especially you guys at the first and second year, you will see most of your instructors are people who have won 10 teaching awards. I mean, something like that. I mean, they teach repeatedly teaching award, they have tons of experience, done an enormous amount of work on themselves to teach well. So we're talking about top notch. So um, one thing that we can say in economics that we are blessed with very good instructors. And uh, I am actually very pleased with them. Of course they are tough, some of them are tough, but you know, we have students writing us testimonial telling us, these guys changed my life, it's fantastic. If you are in a section, for example, with Alex Geinder or um, Andrew Wong or um, Gordon Lee, there's Mesba, they are amazing teachers. So I wouldn't be too concerned because remember online or in person, the quality of the teacher makes a difference. And our, our instructors are fantastic. So sorry if I say that. I mean, I don't count myself into them. I count them, okay? okay. And I get one, one additional, this, this question just came in, one additional ans, uh, advantage of the fact that these lectures are being taped is that if you do get into a class 
a few days late, you'll be able to watch the videos from the first couple lectures and should be able to catch up. Um, will the online lectures be on Zoom or eClass? I'll let Valentina answer that one. Yeah, uh, depends uh, on, the on the course. So many courses are completely asynchronous, meaning that the instructor has already recorded the lectures and therefore the lecture will be just viewable like regular uh, videos posted on eClass. Uh, there are some courses that are synchronous, that is live. And if they are live, then they're typically done on Zoom. Um, there's a question here about what other courses you, we might recommend you take. We actually have a page on our website where we reached out to other departments in the Faculty of Arts and asked them to recommend courses in their departments that might be of interest to economic students. So if you've kind of taken as many of the required courses as you can to get them out of the way and are thinking of other non-econ courses to take, I would recommend you look at that page and see what courses there are in other departments. Uh, I, my personal preference is philosophy, but that's just me, so uh, uh, look around. There is, uh, we have historically very good matches with, uh, um, uh, we have very good matches with um, political science. Uh, students taking a double major or minor my major, political science and economics seem to really jam, jam very well. I mean, and then of course, mathematics, we have a BA in mathematics and in arts, you can do uh, economics and math. If we post yeah. this website, I think that, can I say something sure. quickly? At the end, uh, we know that this meeting, this webinar is recorded and will be posted on the website, but also if you go to the website, on the uh, of economics, on the right side, there is a button called undergraduate notes. We will post all the links we talked about to today also there. Okay, so there is a PowerPoint presentation you can click and there are lots of information. So there's been a few questions about the connections between economics and business. There are a lot of students who take economics and then transfer into business. I think the, I mean, the big difference is economics is a social science, which is really focused on understanding how the world works and the business school tends to be a bit more practical in orientation. Um, I think if you want to go into business, especially if you're thinking that you might do an MBA later, my sense is that MBA programs tend to repeat a lot of stuff that's done in BCom programs. And so I think you'll get a much better education if you do a BA in Econ and then do an MBA. Um, but that's my bias. I'm sure if you talk to someone in the business school, they would give you the exact opposite piece of advice, but that's where I would go. As for getting access to business courses, the business school strictly limits how many courses they let outsiders take. We um, we have some certificate programs that we haven't talked about that we share with the business school. And one of the advantages of those is it allows our students to take some business courses. We occasionally are able to get um, econ students into other business courses, but it's, uh, it's not an easy thing. The business school um, tends to uh, limit that. That may change. The university is introducing a whole new budgeting process, which may make the business school a lot more excited about getting students from outside into their courses. There is also, I think they have direct entrance now, starting from this year. Right. Yeah. So it used to be that you have first to go to economics, then transfer to business. Nowadays, you can apply directly to business. If you get accepted, you can do it. Right, there's another question about 101. I think I was talking to the instructor of 101 the other day. I think he's going to have all of the information you need posted on eClass in the next day or two. So um, I think uh, all, of, all of those questions about 101 will be answered. And again, just to second what Valentina said, Alex Gaynor is one of the best econ instructors in the entire universe. So it'll be a great experience for you all. Yeah. Um.
I can't think of a good reason why it would be especially hard for a Chinese international student, student to learn math. Indeed, it might actually be one of the easier things. Um, uh, if you if if that student struggles a little bit with English, it may be a lot easier to learn systems of equations than theories explained in words. So I, I and I don't think we've I think our experience over the years has been that our international students often do better in the very mathematical courses. Yes. How do we get access to eClass? Okay, eClass, uh, so you go on the website of the University of Alberta, on the top, there is a button that is called eClass, as far as I know, and then you open it. So if you don't have access yet, you have to call ISD, that is, um, um, call, uh, exactly also there you will find, uh, is the technology support, because you should be able to access eClass for your courses. By now, you should be able to be in. If you are enrolled in any course, you should be able to open eClass and see your courses. Um, the BSc joint mathematics, economic, MBA combined, and economic, economic. Oh, yeah, on this, there is a question who asked, uh, the, uh, the, the person asked the question, which is, what is the difference between a BSc joint mathematics and economic program and the BA combined honors in economics and mathematics program? So the big difference as far as I know is that in the BA combined honors in economics and mathematics program, you do the honor for under level micro and macro. So you are more geared towards a graduate school master, a master in economics, right? Now you compare also the requirement and you can see what is the difference. For this type of question, you can also uh, contact me, Valentina Galvani, as bgalvani at uralberta.ca because I am an advisor. So Ray uh, responds to all the queries of, is this course a prerequisite or how do I change program? But I'm there in case you want content, um, content advice. For example, should I take a differential equation course in mathematics if I want to do this? Then I will answer because typically I know, um, I mean, I know what, what fits best in the courses, right? Yeah, if you're interested in development studies, I, again, I, I'm biased here as the chair of economics, but I think economics is is the most valuable thing for you to take. But again, the, the BA degree is structured so that you can take a bunch of courses in other departments. So you could certainly get a BA in economics and take some courses in political science and sociology along the way that would be useful. Um, when you apply to graduate schools, there are some interdisciplinary development studies programs that will take people with majors from any of those disciplines. Um, but again, I think, I think economics really is central to the challenges of, of, of development. And so uh, I think an economics major will, will do you the most good. We do have a number of courses uh, in, in the economics of development. So uh, you, can, you can learn a lot about development. We, we've added, so we have, we've long had courses in kind of international economic development and just in the last year, we've added a couple of courses in indigenous economic development focused on North America. Um, and again, yes, the, our development courses are probably a little less mathematical than some of our other courses, but you still, there are still math requirements for the senior courses in economic development. Okay, if an institution like the World Bank, for example, you know, or Bank of Canada or Stat Canada, depends what you want to do. There is a large preponderance of economists for those who have policy analysis. I mean, you, and then there are also, of course, sociologists and political scientists. There is, we all, all the disciplines are needed for such a difficult problem as development. There's no discussion. But yeah, I mean, economists are typically a good, a good, a good, uh, and good first step towards that direction, economics. Mm 
Uh, since we have a moment of, yep. I just wanted to follow up again on the art works experience, AWE. So the department subsidized the fee to enter this program. So instead of paying 200, you pay 50. And this is a wonderful program to <clears throat> lead you towards internships. And so it's before doing that, they actually train you in job interview, curriculum writers, uh, curriculum writing, and so on. Uh, the people who administering this uh, program are very skilled and they have lots of experience and our econ student do pretty well. Um, I just want to say that by the second year, you should probably contact uh, or at least look up, you know, AWE, Art Work Experience, to see whether you want to try to get an internship. Yeah, so I, I'm forgetting exactly when the direct entry into business, it may be that it starts next year rather than this year. Um, if it says saying. on their website that, then I guess that's the case, but that's certainly starting in 2021 at the very latest that you can enter the business school directly. Um, yeah, so I guess we are running out of time. I think the, I guess the points to, so this is a very friendly department. We all get along, we all take teaching seriously. It is a tremendously great department to be the chair of. Um, I, I think if you choose to take economics courses, you will be satisfied. As Valentina mentioned earlier, our instructors tend to get really great um, teaching evaluations from students. Um, and the other, the other point that's been mentioned before, feel free to contact. You can email me. My email is easy to find on the website. You can email, if you just email the department, Ray will forward questions to whoever is most appropriate. Uh, we really do want you to have a good experience. We take a lot of pride in our program. We should say, uh, I should give kudos to Valentina. She's worked very hard to create the Econ 109 course and to work with the math department to create calculus courses that teach exactly the calculus that we need. So that for those of you who are a little worried about math, you can at least take heart that we've now got calculus courses that teach you exactly the calculus techniques that you need in economics and not other stuff that you don't need. Um, so we have put a lot of effort into tightening up our curriculum over the last couple of years. We're, we're happy to get your feedback and we're happy to answer your questions. Um, yeah, I, I do, I briefly, I think, yes, computing science seems like, uh, if you're interested in that, that seems like a, a great thing to take on the side. And I think this is an amazing coincidence that we've exactly run out of time and we've run out of questions. So uh, I think I'll have to, I was told that I have to shut us down at 1045. Do any of the panelists have one last words of wisdom that they want to share before we close this meeting? If you still have questions, please send an email and we'll answer them. Sounds good. And if you're taking 101 and 102, just pester Austin and Bessendor with, with questions about, uh, with, about economic theory. All right, I think we're done. So thank you all. This, is, this couldn't have worked without the, the wonderful panelists and all of you who participated. And thanks especially to all of you who answered questions. Bye everyone.